I'm Betsy Metten, and I'd like to welcome Kara Cummings today of Kara's Garden. I'm so excited you're here, and uh, we can go ahead and get started with our conversation. I know everybody is going to be excited to learn more about you and get to know about all the great things you're doing. So, well, thank you. Um, so good to talk to you. And um, yeah, I look forward to our chat. Well, great. Thanks. Now, since we're talking about what's going on, I'd love, I know that right now, Flora is open, your membership. And by the time people hear the interview, it will probably be closed. But I know what I like. I know I keep a running list of all the classes I want to take. So I thought it would be a good time to maybe mention a little bit about Flora. So if people are interested for the future, they'll know all about it. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I agree with that. I know it takes time to get to know people and learn about them. So um, even if it's not open, it's a great time to, yeah, just to to hop over and see see what we're all about. Um, so Flora is a membership that I started about a year ago. Um, and when I say started, I mean, I launched about a year ago. I started it in my head many, many years ago. Um, I will talk about this a little bit more, but I started my business, uh, Kira's Garden, uh, in 2020. I, I had had the website and the blog for years and years, but it had been a side thing. So as I launched my business, um, I was deciding kind of what things I would be doing, you know, what constituted an art business. And aside from just making art, I knew I wanted to have a lot of other uh, interesting components. And so a membership allowed me to bring a lot of my favorite things together and share, you know, my love of plants. I have a background in botany and botanical art um, and community, people who love to, you know, nerd out on plants. Uh, that's one of the best parts of it. Um, and then just teach art techniques that can, you know, certainly be used um, in your botanical art, but really you could, you know, even if botanical illustration or that kind of um, painting isn't your thing, you would still be able to uh, use those techniques. So we have a theme every month. And um, so for instance, this month, um, I call, I'm calling it the uh, ratatouille month <laughs> and meaning all the things, the ingredients that you would put into a ratatouille are probably in, um, you know, uh, happening in your garden, if you're a gardener or at your farmer's market or whatever. So we're talking about the plants um, and the Solanaceae, which is the family where you find tomatoes and eggplants and peppers and all those things that we put in our ratatouille. So I, I kind of run it that way where we have a theme every month and then we, um, you know, talk about the botanical aspects and the art aspects of, you know, how would you paint something that's shiny, for instance, you know, a tomato has that shiny spot on it. So, um, yeah, it's really fun. So we've, uh, are, you know, gaining a few people every time and it's become a really fun, really connected group, uh, in our community and we're having a good time. So, yeah, I, I started out opening uh, Flora on the solstices and the equinoxes, so kind of going with the seasons, um, and I realized that was a lot, so now I'm only opening on the equinoxes, so twice a year, oh, and that gives us a time, you know, for everybody to kind of connect and get settled and feel like they're uh, entering the membership and getting to know it before I get distracted and busy with marketing and bringing more people in. So anyway, that's that's kind of what we've been doing. That is so awesome. And actually, this is perfect because the next one will be in March then. Yes, exactly. If I have my exactly. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you have your equinoxes correct. Yeah, I, well, I did teach for a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those things. but um, you know I think that's wonderful and I no matter what you do the the thing I gained from doing botanical and scientific illustration 
were really great observational skills. So no, no matter how, as you said, whether it's art or whatever, whatever purpose, I, I found that my observational skills really were honed and then understanding some of the science made the whole world open up. Yeah, you know, I've noticed a lot of people get intimidated by, you know, the scientific names of plants and things like that. And they think it's confusing until we kind of talk about it and say, well, actually, you know, I used uh, the Solanaceae family, which, you know, someone say, might think, oh, that's a that's a word that I'll never remember. But once you understand what the characteristics are and that um, all of these things that you eat and, and you can kind of look at the flowers and you can look at the structures and you can say, oh my gosh, now I can understand why they're related. And then it's actually easier. Instead of remembering each plant as a one-off, you're like, okay, I understand this group a little bit better now. And I think people who you didn't even know they were interested in that, like that. Because like you say, it, suddenly when they're out in the world, they learn to look and they're like, okay, I know a little bit about some plant families now. So I could say, I think, I think that one might fit in there. Um, yeah. So it's really fun. That is, that is so cool. And you're right. Well, you're helping people build that structure and then you need that structure first, and then you can hang all that information on it and then, and remember it and it's meaningful and purposeful. So, well, good. Well, great. I know that, um, I know there'll be people who see this who'll be interested in Florida. It, it just sounds wonderful to me. So thanks for thanks for giving us a little more insight on that. Yeah. So I had uh, my audience knows, and I told Kara I, I just I will read the questions because um, otherwise we never know. <laughs> <laughs> And we can go wherever we want, but that way I make sure I have <laughs> So anyway, so we were taught, you, you're running a creative business. And um, one of the things Karen and I were talking about ahead of time um, is that, you know, we all have had these different, different things that we've done that sometimes at the time you think, hmm, but then later, like, oh, I'm so glad I did that because I learned X, Y, Z and I can do this. And, but I was wondering, did you always think you would be running a creative business or where did you, and you said a little bit about your background, kind of how you started. And I don't know if it's like my career has been a little bit like hiking and I had a, like switchbacks <laughs> or packing and sailing, you go, and then something is, so I, I know people would love to hear about that and if you always had this creative business in mind or if it sort of evolved yeah so I um just to quickly go way way back I you know I've always been um really interested in art I when I first went to school uh I was an art major and I was pretty sure that's what I wanted to do and um I had to take a science class for, you know, a, it was a requirement. And I looked at the list and I was like, well, I like plants, I'll take botany. And I took that class and it was like, oh my gosh, never mind, I'm going to be a scientist. <laughs> so I kind of let the, let the art go. And when I got um, into the biology department, there was a class listed that had not been in the art department. It was not cross listed and it was uh, scientific illustration. And, you know, it was just like all of my favorite things had come together. So that's when I started painting um, and I considered changing majors again. I considered going actually to a school that had a scientific illustration program, uh, UC Santa Cruz. Um, but I did not go. I stayed at, at UC Santa Barbara and um, I, but I always loved it so much. It really helped me. Like we were talking about observational skills. So as a biology student, I was able to take these skills of learning how to do scientific illustration and my notes were, you know, beautiful. <laughs> And it really helped me to learn the biology by taking this other skill and um, and using it. 
So I really enjoyed that. And, you know, I went on and uh, ended up going into nonprofit and in graduate school, it was really much more about uh, environmental science and policy and climate change and all that kind of thing. But this skill I had that I loved, I mean, it was both a skill and, um, and a hobby and a passion and all of those things always helped. It was always something I could, there was always something I could use in my job. So um, as I worked in the nonprofit sector, uh, if anybody's worked in nonprofit, you know that you oftentimes do many jobs. You might have a job title, but you have many jobs. And, you know, one of them was certainly, you know, marketing and creating materials and all of that. And because I was working in agriculture and environmental science areas, again, those skills kind of translated. So I never let go of it. You know, I always used those, um, the things that I had learned. And then about 10 years ago, I started just teaching some classes on the side. Um, I started teaching some botanical painting classes uh, on farms, actually. I, I was working uh, as the executive director uh, of a nonprofit that we taught farm business planning. And in the process, I met all these great farmers who had these beautiful spaces. And so we would, I would bring people up to the farm and they could go pick flowers and plants and things. And then we would learn, learn about them and then paint them. So that was just something I did on the weekends now and again, and uh, kind of fast forward to 2019. And I had my um, 50th birthday and I was kind of thinking about, you know, those things, those milestone birthdays, like, what am I doing? Uh, am I happy? And as much as I loved my career and I do love um, mission-driven work, I was getting pretty burned out and um, definitely feeling like I wanted to do more of my creative work. And so I think, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you can take all of these things. So then it kind of switched, right? Before I was using my art skills in my nonprofit um, and executive world. And then when I decided to switch to an art uh, business, a creative practice, um, I was able to use everything I learned running a nonprofit, which is basically running a small business. And so I could take those skills and apply them now to my new art business. So I feel like whatever you do, it's never, you know, maybe never, but never. It's never a waste of time, right? You can always take something from your background or what you've learned and you can apply it to, you know, whatever it is you want to do moving forward. So with my creative business, you know, I decided this, of course, um, at the end of 2019 um, and you know 2020 was going to be my big year to launch a business and like all of us that was a complicated time to do that but I do feel like I had so many interesting life experiences behind me that um, I was honestly glad to be responsible for myself I did not have to worry about whether or not somebody I was working for was going to have the creativity and the problem solving skills to figure out how to get, you know, pivot or, or do whatever needed to be done uh, to get through the next couple of years. So in some ways it was really hard and other ways it felt like, okay, this is exactly like, this is what I'm built for. <laughs> Challenges are, um, are my thing. You know, I love, I love creative problem solving. I think a lot of us as creatives like that, right? That's what we like to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, you know, I guess that's a kind of a long way of getting to, it was always there, but the decision kind of to do it full time just happened in 2019. It's, it's so amazing and it's so interesting listening. I have a different background from you, but some of the things, for I've always felt that science and art are very closely related because they both rely on observation. 
and that uh, and I love that intersection between the two of them. It, it just seems that you've, as you've said, these interests have been there, and it's almost like you're weaving and at different times, different strands are on top, you know, and then wow. it goes back and forth, but it's always there, and you've just created such an interesting an interesting life and I love for people to hear how you've built it on these past experiences and and I really agree nothing's wasted because at the very least I'll never forget that first job I had after college and I it's supposed to be this great job I thought well hey now we never have to do that again I, <laughs> that's, it's like I never had this desire to go into corporate training after that because I knew, I mean, it's a great career, but not for me. So, I mean, I saved myself a lot of time in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm guessing you probably learned something or took something from that to the next thing, right? Oh, absolutely. Because I love teaching and I just don't want to teach the same 12 things over and over again. And right. so it's that creative problem solving. So, yeah. What like I mean that's just an amazing background and I can see why I think that botany is one of those things that isn't necessarily woven into everybody's education and mm -hmm. and that's it's such a gift that you're giving to people to explain it because it does make the world so much more interesting. Yeah, you know it's it's such an interesting thing. Um, flowers, florals. You know, I don't even know what else to say other than you could just say flowers and almost everybody loves flowers in some way, right? And as artists and creatives, you know, we, how many people do we know who um, use florals in their work? And so, and I don't think it will ever get tired. I don't think we'll ever um, go out of fashion, you know, we could talk about all the scientific reasons and why life depends and all of those, but just purely as something that's beautiful and makes us feel good, people like flowers. So I, what I really enjoy is helping people who know they love flowers and particularly who want to use them in their art um, or in their creative practice in some way is to learn a little bit more and learn how to look at them. and. You know, we, we all have iPads and we have all of these uh, great tools and we can trace and we can get beautiful images and that's wonderful, but there's something very different, you know, about, you know, pulling something apart and looking at it. A photograph of this is not going to do nearly as much for me as if I can, you know, look at it. I pull out my magnifying glass. Suddenly I know how it's attached. I might see something that I had no idea was there. And if I'm a fabric designer, then suddenly it's like, wow, I've got 10 motifs in here. Once I look at it with a magnifying glass that I would not have known before, but, you know, would start to take it apart and suddenly it's like, and try and draw it. And maybe you draw it so it looks just like it, or maybe it's something completely different, but it was inspired by that. So I just think taking a little bit of time with, um, you know, with flowers and beautiful things from nature and touching them and yeah, that kind of thing really changes your art. Even if you're someone who already knew you loved flowers and you use them in your practice, I think there's even more that you can do. Absolutely. I agree with you. Like, a million percent <laughs> that when you know that oh I wonder where the stamen is or the pistol or or whatever yeah so I I just think I mean how fun and I absolutely agree with you so I know that's why your flora flora members you know love the membership and what you're doing so well you were talking about like we've talked a little bit about your path and to your current creative business and I was just wondering when you um sometimes people will say to me well I don't really know what to do next and so what I always like to ask people who I'm talking to is especially because you've, you've had such an interesting career and I know you 
I was, I'm reading this book about, you know, the story of your life, you know, you've got much more to go in this story. <laughs> but as you come to certain junctures, I mean, there isn't always something like two years ago with, you know, COVID that, you know, stops everything. How do you, how do you look at like, well, what's my next step? Do these things, do you have a process that you do or does it sort of evolve? It's a question that I get from people. Like, I just don't. And so I always like to ask how other people have gone about that. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> boy, it is, it's a hard thing to pinpoint. So I would say, um, it's definitely evolving all the time. When I started, even just with this idea of I'm going to be a full-time artist, I just made that decision. I said it out loud. I told my friends and family, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I know that I was in a very fortunate position to be able to say, I'm quitting my job and um and I'm not going to do consulting for nonprofit work anymore. I'm not going to do fundraising. Like I just, I had to say no to a lot of things that I knew would make money and do the things that, you know, were comfortable and I, I guess easy for me uh, in some ways. And so just saying it out loud and talking to people about it was like, you know, I, I don't know what you're like, but for me, it's like, now that I've said it, I'm doing it. And <laughs> You know, I'm going to show you all, not that, I mean, everybody was very positive about it, but I think that's the first step. But then I had to start figuring out what that meant. Um, I knew I would do some painting, you know, I had been painting all along and I loved painting. Um, but there's this other part for me, this yeah, other part of my mind, this, you know, the scientific part and the building thing. So uh, you know, as a nonprofit person, I, you know, I created programs and I was building all the time. And I think that part of me was like, how do I use that to build a business that's bigger than just painting? Not that there's anything wrong with just painting, but for me, it was like, I knew I wanted to do more. I knew I wanted to be able to use the parts of my brain that keep me excited and keep me motivated and a little bit uncomfortable. You know, all of that is kind of how I thrive. So um, part of it is just, you know, just trying a lot of things, probably too many things and having a, some of them maybe not work in the moment. So I keep a list. I'm I'm an idea person. I come up with 10 ideas a day and it's really easy for me to get distracted. Um, you know, it's like, well, I could do this and I could do this. And I, yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was more a matter of like, okay, keep a, keep a list. Um, you can have all the ideas, but I had to kind of figure out what ones made sense. So for the first year, and of course it was a different year than, you know, it was 2020. So I was at home and a lot of time to think. Um, I started out by picking a new medium. So I used oil paints for a year and I didn't do any watercolor painting, which I've done, you know, for 30 years. And I did a painting a week um, for my, you know, it was 50th birthday, 50 paintings. And Part of the reason I did that was to make myself, again, get out of my comfort zone before I made a decision and, you know, to challenge myself and also to make myself stop. Like the week is over, you got to move on and do the next thing to keep myself moving forward. Um, so in the meantime, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm painting and I'm doing these things, but, but what else is there? And I took, you know, Bonnie Christine's class that year. I took um, Emily Jeffords class that year. I took Stu McLaren's class. I took, I was at home. So I just thought, well, I'm just going to do it all. I, I have time. <laughs> if ever I had time, it's now. So I, I did a lot of painting. I took a lot of classes and I just like immersed myself in as much as I possibly could. I realized not everybody might like this you know some people like to do a little bit and absorb and do some and absorb but for me it worked really well yeah. 
And then it was like, okay, now I have more than I can handle. What do I want to do with it? Um, and started coming up with ideas. And one of the things I noticed after a year, you know, maybe I'm at a year and a half at this point is that, so I, I had painted, um, I, you know, I made products for my holiday shop. I was doing some teaching and I thought, okay, what is it that I love? And what is it that my audience loves? Yeah. Like they aren't necessarily gonna be the same thing. So that's another big question, I think. Yeah. Um, and people really loved the education. People wanted to learn. And so that to me was, an, and I also love to teach. So that was good. Yeah. Um, but I had, I was able to kind of take that information and it was, it helped me make decisions. So although I knew I was still going to paint and I do, and I'll always paint, that's probably never going to be the part of my business that, you know, makes, makes a living or what, you know, it's, I, I'll sell some paintings and do those and that, and that's fine. And it doesn't even matter to me um, because I also love to teach. And so I took that information and started teaching more. Um, so I think that's, this is again, a long answer, but it's trying things that I like, gathering some information and then deciding, okay, does something need to go or do I need to treat it differently in my business, even if it doesn't need to go? Um, or is it something that, okay, this is starting to really make sense. Let's dive in deep and see if this is the one or, you know, one of the things that is going to be part of my business. So it's, it's a lot of, um, a lot of trying, a lot of trial and error. And uh, like I said, I have a ton of ideas. So I'm never out of ideas. It's more keeping myself focused. I understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> really great to hear because I think oftentimes there's a desire for people to say okay well I'm here and I just want to make a decision and and then do this next thing but you really kind of have to let it like you make a decision you work toward it but you're you're always sort of reevaluating too and and I think that's such a a great observation that it's what you do that other people like you can still do these other things mm -hmm. but the business of it is what are other people asking for too and your students will want to buy your your art also but um i find teaching fills a place in my life that in just working by myself making art does you know, I need that other part. And you're right, it's problem solving and it's interacting with people and it's seeing them come alive. And so- Yeah, watching other people make progress is just the most, you know, it, it makes my heart sing. I love that. So um, yeah, I feel like I get as much out of teaching as, you know, my students get from, from being in my classes. Um, oh, yeah. 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 I love that. <laughs> yeah, so that's, and just the way, you know, you light up. And so it's, but I just think it's so great for people to hear that you can have these interests and find a way to put them together to create something that's incredibly satisfying for yourself and for other people too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's another interesting thing because, um, you know, with, that's gonna some other examples would be as you know so in a creative business you're learning a lot of technology you're learning how to use other programs or cameras or uh, video and editing and all of these things and for me I actually consider that part of my creative process I love doing that too um, I'm not going to go be a videographer and have that be a career but it certainly is part really important for what I do, you know, I create videos every single week. So I get better and better at it. Um, and then in painting, you know, even, even though it's not the biggest part of the money making pie of my business, um, I have, I'm, I'm an artist and I teach art. So painting is part of that. I need to do that. I mean, I want to do it, but I also need to do that. So 
there are a lot of things that when you, if you were only to look at numbers or, you know, if you were to evaluate your business in the, you know, it's like with, with farming, you know, I used to teach people, it's like, put all your crops and put all the prices and see which ones you need to cut from your business. And that was a very different kind of business, but I don't feel like I have to do the same thing. I, I feel like as long as I keep my, my ratios kind of correct, you know, the amount of time um, that it can all feed the creative part. And I think that's the fun part. It's, ex it can be exhausting, but it's also the really fun part of a creative business is all the different things you get to do. Absolutely. And I think that's such a good point that to take that away would be to miss a huge part of what's important to you and what when you're painting, it's not only satisfying for you, it probably gives you ideas for your students and classes. Yes. And yeah, so it's uh, it's just great the way it all, I love how it all kind of comes together and um, and is so uniquely you too, which, right. yeah, which is really great. So, yeah. well, thank you. Um, so if you were wondering, we talked, uh, Karen and I talked a little bit about this before we started recording. And something that, that I hear a lot, and I do remember even being, I started my first teaching job when I was 37. I went back to school and got a, it was Montes, like elementary Montessori. And I remember telling the principal, well, you know, I'm going to be 40 in three years. I'm getting kind of old. I mean, this is after I had the job. And <laughs> we liked people with some life behind them because, you know, in the classroom. But um, now, you know, decades later, I just feel lucky. You know, I don't feel old. It's funny how the perspective changes. <laughs> yes. But what would you tell the people? I hear it at every like especially as people get to a new decade, but what would you tell people who think, who think, well, I'm too old to start something new? You know, I've never picked up a paintbrush or I've never, you know, this or that, um, but I've, I don't even know if I'm creative. What would you say? Um, well, this, the, the thing I say to people, the, the first thing I always say is time's going to go by whether you do it or not. In five years from now, I'm going to be five years older, whether I do the thing or I don't do the thing. That doesn't matter. So do the thing, right? <laughs> um, and I, you know, like you, I went back to school. Um, I, you know, I, I thought I was, that I was so old at 28 going to college, right? Um, and at, at the time it seemed like, but everybody else is you know, 18 or 20. And, you know, I felt like this old lady. I was like, well, that's silly. Uh, thank goodness I did that. And then, you know, grad school, the same thing. I was like, oh, am I really going to do this now? You know, I was studying for finals uh, in grad school on my 40th birthday, you know, that <laughs> was not, uh, didn't seem like the, you know, normal thing to do. But had I not done it, then the only thing would have changed is that I didn't do it. You know, I, it's like, um, so it's never too late, I guess is my point. And there's no such thing as too late. That That's not real. The, the question is, um, you know, do you have an interest and is there a way for you to pursue it? Uh, you, you know, it's, it's quite simple. It doesn't really even matter what the outcome is. Um, you know, maybe something will work, maybe it doesn't, but that's, that's what we do, right? We try things. And so I think we're also bombarded with this kind of idea that, oh, well, you're older, you'll never understand technology. And, you know, that's not true. We can all learn anything that becomes important to us. Um, you know, I think that's, that's really the only thing. The only thing, the only reason you wouldn't do something or couldn't do something probably is because you didn't want to more than you wanted to do something else, right? That's a good point. So, yeah, so it's, um, I, and creativity and painting and art and all of that in particular, I think as we get older, depending on, you know, our lives and how busy we are and families and kids and all, you know, all of those things, 
it could be that you just truly don't have an, enough time for that to be a priority at some point in your life. Um, but then maybe you hit a point where you can make it a priority and who cares that you didn't do it before, you know, you could, you get to learn it now. So yeah, I really, really, really think it's important for people to always be trying new things. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of funny to be, you know, at my age and trying a whole new business and, you know, I, to have a, a, a new fresh business, uh, that I'm trying to figure out where it's going or what it's going to do. Some people might think, Oh, you're behind. I don't know. I think I'm right in the right spot. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just think some people haven't had opportunities, you know, that they didn't have, and it, it truly is never, never too late. And I, I love exactly all the things that you said. And I, um, I, I'm sure it will encourage other people to try new things. I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it um, in different places, but that idea of, you know, the concentric circles, like we have our comfort zone and things a little bit outside. And and I'm always like pushing, you know, to try yeah. to, or pulling like, okay, this is outside my comfort zone. And this, by this time in two weeks, I want, I want it inside. Like I want to get how to do X, Y, Z. Right. you know the sticking point and some things take a lot longer than that but but it is and then something that you know seems really hard you look back and you're like oh wow I can do that now without like a zoom call <laughs> right. <laughs> right yeah. now. I, know. I, know. I know and now we're froze yeah Thank yeah you. here, here we that. are um, yeah well I just uh you know I think in talking to you too I I love learning always, you know, whether it's going to be something I learn for fun or become really proficient at, or I become really good at, and I can teach someone else. I don't, I don't even know what that is. Like in, in a couple of years, I could be teaching something I don't know now. Yeah. Um, so I just love to keep learning. That's the other part of, uh, you know, the trying new things It's just it's, it's good for your brain. It feels good. It's fun. It is. And I, I feel the same way. I absolutely love to learn and it's, um, and deciding, um, yeah, that list idea is good. Otherwise, because it's like being in a candy store. It's like, well, there's, no, yeah. That's a great <laughs> yeah. Well, you have, like, you're doing so many interesting things. And even when we love our work, you know, it's always important to have a way to, um, kind of recharge. Um, and I think I know where you find your inspiration, but I'd love for you just to explain a little bit like where you go. Um, I know you've got lots of ideas all the time, but let's say on the rare time when you might need some inspiration or you feel like, oh my gosh, I really kind of want to fill my, fill my creative well. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things, if you had a couple tips for people? Yeah, I mean, you have. I think part of it is figuring out where you are or what you do to make you feel good. Or sometimes it's not even good. There's a um, there's a comfort feeling, a relaxed feeling uh, when you can, you know, let stress melt away or whatever it is, whatever that is for people. For me, it is you know, it's outside, it's being in nature. Um, you know, I obviously paint a lot of flowers and I teach about botany and all of that. But I also, the other thing, the other thing that I love, you know, maybe more than anything else is water. So getting in the water, swimming, going uh, on the water. I grew up sailing. I taught sailing when I was a kid. I um, surfed. I have a paddle board now, now that I'm away from, you know, big water, <laughs> I do smaller water things. Um, but I, so even though those things aren't necessarily botany or botanically inspired, it's when my mind and my body rest and recharge and all the ideas and the lists and the things that can build and get overwhelming. Uh, sometimes when I'm in it, if I can remove myself from it, 
that's actually when a lot of inspiration comes. So rather than looking for inspiration and say going on a hike and looking for flowers or something, which is also great, but I think it's actually the the relaxing part, the letting your mind um, not be there is where I I find a lot of inspiration. So, you know, another example would be like for people who play sports, you know, sometimes when you're playing sports, um, which I used to do a lot, it's one of those times where you can't think, all you can think about is, you know, what you're doing in the, you know, playing soccer or Frisbee or whatever it is. Um, and by not allowing your brain to work on your business or your art or whatever for a little while, I think when you can come back to it then is when I can get clarity uh, and more inspiration comes. So when my energy is re, um, you know, kind of reinvigorated, then I can take all of those thoughts and things that were feeling like scrambled eggs and kind of bring them together and focus more. So I don't think I'm ever not inspired. You know, there's just too many things <laughs> for me personally, yeah. but I can get overwhelmed and I can get very stuck and I can get, you know, feel very paralyzed and not be moving forward. So for me, it's less about looking for inspiration as it is for looking for time for my mind to rest so that I can solve those problems again um, or make decisions that make sense. Because uh, I think when we're tired or we're overwhelmed or we're unsure, that's the, not a good time to make a decision, right? You want to, you want to say, oh, I'm going to quit that because it's not working, or I'm going to do this other thing because I thought of it in the middle of the night. Um, but if you can kind of sit with it or let it be, let it sit out here somewhere and, you know, relax yourself and then come back to it, then for me, that's when I think I find the most inspiration. You know, that it all makes so much sense. And there is something about being on the water. I actually saw a picture. I was, I was like, oh, good for you. You were, I tried to stand up paddle boarding for the first time last summer in Hawaii. So there were waves. So <laughs> <Yes. laughs> they were in, little, we're in a little cove. So I stood up a little bit, but I also was sort of kneeling on this stand up path. But I saw pictures of you and I was like, wow, it is really whether you're on a paddle board or swimming or floating or whatever, being on the water is just, it is so relaxing. Uh, yeah, it is. We've been going um, a lot the, at the end of this summer and just, I know that I'm, I'm just recharging. So it's like getting in the water as much as I can to to recharge and you know I'm such a summer person that I get a little anxiety this time of year you know it's yeah. the fall which is fine but then the winter comes and <laughs> so in order to not get too stressed out about it I uh, I do as much recharging right now and what happens when I do that is that I start to get excited about all the projects that I haven't had time for so now I'm like, okay, I know that I'm nervous about winter, but I also know that all of these ideas and all of this stuff is starting to happen. And I'm finding myself, it's like, okay, I'll do my walk in, in the garden in the morning and have my coffee, but then I'm ready to come in the studio and start thinking about these ideas on these cool mornings. So um, yeah, you have to, you know, learning to work seasonally, even, you know, with flowers and botany and all yeah it makes sense but kind of more than that I think our energy is probably seasonal too it's like what what kind of work we do when and even though I would it makes sense that I would do all my painting and all a lot of my work in the summer there's so many other things just being outside and absorbing it and and seeing it and I'm going to have to do some of that later so learning how to work within the seasons that make sense with your energy. That is such a great perspective, especially for somebody like, I spent most of my um, growing up years in Arizona. So oh. here we are in Chicago. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, yeah, and so I get kind of like that anxiety about um, 
winter too. And, or, or just, I should say, it's probably just a bad attitude. (laughs) (laughs) And so I'm going to, and you know, I, we've lived here 38 years, so lived here a long time. And so I've managed, but I'm going to try that perspective this year that, wow, look at all this inside, you know, not like we, we live in a hundred year old house. So it's there, you know, it's like, sometimes it's not, I think maybe we need a little more insulation. (laughs) (laughs) I, yeah, that, I love that perspective. Thank you. And I always benefit so much from what I learn from, you know, whomever I'm talking to. Well, I, let's see. So, Oh, okay. So everybody does love behind the scenes. And I know you shared um, some of your process, but I was wondering if you could, if there's something you'd like to tell us a little bit about, whether it's how you go about painting or your classes or it's whatever interests you. (laughs) Um, Yeah, boy, I, I wish I could say that I am um, that organized that I have processes to talk about and they and and I do in the sense like they just change a lot so and part of it is the seasonal thing um so one thing you know I have already mentioned is I try and always work from life so and I live in Michigan and I paint flowers so how do I work with that um and I take a lot of photos I dry a lot of flowers uh I do a lot of sketching and note taking and then maybe I'll just save a few dried flowers and even though they're going to look different I might have my sketch I might have some notes I do a color studies so I kind of get myself ready for winter um And since I don't want to sit in my studio all day in the summer, I want to get outside as much as I can. It actually works well. I can sketch and do all of those things outside. But when it comes to really making a painting or doing videos for Flora or something, I need to be inside. So I do a lot of inspiration collecting or um, even materials collecting in the summer. And then I do a lot of my... um, you know, kind of getting down to it in the colder season. Um, I also do a lot of writing in the colder season. So just in terms of a, a personal practice, I get up and I exercise first thing in the morning. Like I, I do yoga out of the house at six o'clock in the morning. Um, and then when I come back, I sit down and I write for an hour and it's not really the morning pages. I it, It's inspired by that. But for me, I don't necessarily um, write in that way. I have a whole list of things. So as, a, as creative business owners, we all have a lot of writing to do, whether you like it or not, right? You're <laughs> writing copy for your website. You're writing uh, social media posts. You're there's always something that you need to be writing. And so what I discovered, and I actually like to write, but it can kind of feel like you're always needing to come up with something on the spot. So what I started doing is for me, my mind is very clear in the morning. So I sit down in the morning and I I have a whole list of you know prompts and what they are are things I need to write (laughs) you know they're I call them prompts but it's like okay social media posts a blog post uh, a lesson I need to write an article I promise someone and I just have that list and it's like okay that one looks interesting right now and I write for an hour so that's like that's one thing I do in terms of a, a process business process is the way I look at it um, <laughs> Sorry, you didn't interrupt you, but I was like, You're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in the summer, I have to say I'm not as good at it because I, you know, immediately go outside. I just want to be outside. Um, and it's not that I can't write outside, but I can make myself be more focused uh, kind of seasonally. So I know I'm kind of skipping around to different things. Um, but business wise, that one has really changed things for me. Um, because it's just one of those things that it's, it doesn't ever go away. You don't ever get to the end of that list. Uh, 
that you is, know, as you know. A, yeah, and I'm sorry to mean to, um, that is such a great idea. I never would have thought of that. And it's something that I think all of us who are running creative businesses have have things waiting to be written. And I'm definitely a morning person too. You know, I even, yeah. I'm kind of done at about, well, whenever I'm done, but it's not, <laughs> let me tell you, I'm done way before then. <laughs> and so, yeah, my best time is in the morning too, but I, I love that. I love that idea. Yeah. And you know, the other thing about that um, is that you get better and better at it. It's like the I, when I first started it, it was like, ooh, I could I could go about fifteen minutes, and I was so fidgety. I was like, I was like the fourth grader who you're just like, no, you have to sit down and finish. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, if you go five more minutes, you can get up and get a cup of coffee. If yeah. you go five more minutes, you can like bring myself. And then I get you know I would get better and better at it, but you know, if you need to write, you know, a bio, if you need to write, there's just always something and there's always something that you can improve on, you know, a month go by and you're like, wow, yeah, I did that. Um, I can make that better. <laughs> so I think those are the kinds of things that, again, I'm constantly reevaluating and looking at like what works. So my, um, you know, my processes are kind of changing and evolving all the time. So yeah, the, the writing is one, the collecting, you know, things for art for later is another one. Um, what else in, in terms of my process? Um, I'm getting better at, um, you know, I know we've both taken classes with Bonnie, that idea of batch working and, you know, trying to, and the, that's kind of what the writing is. It's, it's doing that, but what are other things in my business? Like, instead of doing a little bit of video three times a week, what if I just do all of my video in one day? You know, I know what's coming up. I've made my schedule. I can probably do that. Um, so just getting, I think I'm always working on getting a little bit more efficient, not just for the sake of efficiency, but also to enjoy and learn more. You know, I think when you, whether it's writing, it's painting, it's technology, by doing it for a little bit longer each time, I think you actually can get better. You make little, little mini breakthroughs um, by forcing yourself through the discomfort of something. It's really easy to say, okay, I'm done. That's good enough. I'll, I'll do the next video next week. But if you push yourself now, I think you take a little bit more of that learning with you and kind of can force yourself into uh, having some more stamina for, for doing it longer and learning from it right away. So. Absolutely. I think that's, there's so much great information in what you've said and and you're right. And sometimes we're just in that messy middle and we just need to stick with it a little bit longer as yes. like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, you know, that's such, that's such great. I think people can take so much away from all the things that you shared with us. So speaking of like, so looking forward to the coming year and I know it's very seasonal. It's just, it's, I'm going to go into winter thinking of it differently this year. <laughs> 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 but, uh, anyway, uh, are there things that you have like that you're particularly looking forward to? I know you've got your uh, floor membership open right now. And, and I have to say your photography is so gorgeous that um, I really, um, really enjoy always looking at whatever you're posting, but any particular projects that you'd want to share? Any anything that you're for the next coming that's coming up that you're excited about? Um, let's see. I do. I have. I'm trying to think of which of my half baked ideas I uh, <laughs> want to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I am definitely. I have some fun um, ideas percolating for the winter in particular. Um, I, one of them, I, I'm going to tell you next week or the week after. You don't have to tell I'm not them. quite, I, I can't really quite yeah. talk about it yet, but, okay. um, but I have some others. So 
I'm going to, I'm working on a new course. So I, you know, I have the membership, but I know that um, some people would like a more intensive, learn some, some basics. So I'm working on a drawing course, actually. I, I think that's the one question I get the most um, or request from people is learning how to draw. And it's, it's one of those things too that um, I think it's easy for people who are getting into art to skip. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, I'll just go straight to painting or I'll go straight to, um, you know, whatever the thing is, even if it's digital art, there's something very amazing about a pencil and a piece of paper and learning to look and learning to draw. So anyway, that's the little teaser. I've been working on that and hopefully Wonderful. that will be ready for next year, uh, early, early 2023, if all goes well. Uh, so that's a big one. That's great. And then um, the other one that I'll, I'll, I'll tease a little bit is a, um, and I, it's not that I have a publisher, but I do have a book in the works uh, in my head. And it's part of my morning writing is, is my outline on that. So that may be more like two years out, but, um, but these are the kinds of things that they're, they, they've been on the big list and they're, they are working their way to the top. And because I'm feeling pretty comfortable with where Flora is and how to do the openings. And, you know, there's a lot learning that. Uh, I had to put a lot of other things aside and now I'm moving those two things. I've got a third one that I can't talk about yet um, up to the top of the list. And that's a lot, but, uh, but those are the things, those are the big ones that I'm working on. Those are fabulous. Those are fantastic. And I think that, um, well, I, I'm going to be very excited to, uh, to watch this unfold and very happy to share, you know, with people as you introduce these things, because I, I took some, when I was taking a botanical illustration class once, the teacher said, you know, before photography, everybody drew. Yes. And yes. so it's, it's one of those things that it's, you know, practice and observation and you're so good at explaining and showing things that, I mean, what a wonderful person to learn drawing from. So that's going to be, I mean, they're both really exciting ideas. So I, I mean, I know I could talk forever with you because <laughs> it's been such a pleasure, but where can, um, where can people find you? And I will have at the end of the interview, like at the end of our interview, I always have a, a contact card and I put it at the mm -hmm. beginning too. But if people want to find, well, I know they're going to want to find you. So, but where, where can people um, go to find you? So my website and email are probably the best ways to keep up with what I'm doing. Um, so karasgarden.com is my website and if people want to kind of keep up with what's happening and the new things to sign up for the email as as we know as um, creative business owners these days social media is getting harder and harder to reach people and so I am definitely on Instagram and um you know, for better or for worse, uh, it's it's a place to uh, find people and keep up if you can. So I'm definitely there. I, I am not, well, technically I'm on Facebook, but not very good at it. So it's okay. I wouldn't go there. <laughs> I think we all kind of pick one and then, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can only do so much, you know, it's like you got to pick your, pick your one thing and, uh, and stick to it. So yeah, so those are the best places to find me. Um, I, I do, oh, and you know, on my website, I have a blog, which again, has been real quiet over the summer, but uh, tends to pick back up in the, in the winter. <laughs> Yeah. I decided not to fight myself on these things. You know, <laughs> I think we find our rhythm. And I think sometimes by allowing that rhythm to show itself, it's like I realized I can do, and I, I really look forward to doing an interview every other month. But if I were to do one every month, I just, it would be too much. And yeah. so yeah. 
and this way I really look forward to it and and that is you know it's just kind of evolved that way so well I just I want to thank you so much I just I hope we have an opportunity to meet in person I mean this is live but I hope you have an opportunity to meet in person soon because this is just fun like really fun for me so good. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation and um, yeah, it's so good after all this time to meet the famous Betsy Mitten. I don't know about the famous part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.